All right, well, Matt, it's fantastic to be chatting with you. I'm a, a bit of a fan. Um, thanks for joining me, mate. My absolute pleasure. Um, I've got Dinosaur Island and My Pit Dinosaur on Blu-ray. Um, like I said, I'm actually yeah, quite a fan of what you do and the kind of movies that you make. Um, and Secret Kingdom did not disappoint. So congratulations on the film. Well, thank you very much. That's a, that's a hell of a start to an interview. I'm already happy. <laughs> <laughs> buddy you up, buddy you up, mate. <laughs> but I'm sincere. I'm sincere at the same time. You've clearly got an infinity for childhood adventure and all that kind of stuff. Um, what draws you to the genre? I think it's a number of things, actually. For me, I'm a big kid at heart, I think. Uh, 30 years of visual effects experience also means that I have, I've played in the realm of imagination for a very long time and I've probably never grown up. Oh, that's a good enough reason, I reckon. Um, and you, I, I'm guessing we're around, around about the same age, so you would have grown up on all of the Amblin films, you know, like I did. Oh, and, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, like, these type of stories, that, particularly the one that you tell in Secret Kingdom, are usually based on classic books or some kind of literature. This one is an original story. Um, there are a whole lot of influences in there, no doubt. You'll, uh, you know, you'll concede that. Um where did this story come from? What inspired you to tell it? Well, funny enough, this one's a bit of a personal story. It's, um, I, I, anxiety was something that I was um, afflicted with and wanted to explore a little bit more. Um, and so to some extent, uh, this film was quite cathartic in that respect. Yeah. I, that's definitely one that, like, I was going to ask you next about the the themes of anxiety and um and and just in friendship in general. Um, it's it's an important one too. Like, you know, I hope that a lot of kids that watch this film really feel like they're not alone when they do see the the story that you put in front of them. Um, well, I think the it... thing, the major thing, is that fear comes in all shapes and sizes, and um, I wanted to put that on screen. I wanted to also explore some of the things that. I used to do as a kid and even caught myself doing as an adult as well. And funny enough, I thought I was alone in this, but those counting games, you know, those little ways of trying to gain control over situations that are uncontrollable or, you know, just little ways to manifest control in your world um, when you're worried about something that's bigger and, you know, slightly scarier than, than you are. And I hadn't seen that on film before. In fact, I, I wasn't even aware that other people did those kind of things. But I found out through talking to people, friends and family that it was quite widespread. And yet it is the first time I've seen that put on film. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and obviously, the realm of imagination is where, you know, if you talk about dreamscapes, that's where, you know, we, depending on what the latest scientific data is on dreaming. And I'm not sure we have all the answers there, uh -huh. but I've heard that it's a way for us to, or our brain to actually start to defragment, piece together things, explore stuff uh, in a, in a less structured fashion so that we mm -hmm. can come to terms with things. And I suppose that is the landscape of the below here. It's the landscape of the mind. So in this film, that that really is the the world that we enter. Yeah, right. Where did the seed of of Secret Kingdom come from, though? Like, you know, um, you know, you didn't have classic literature to tap into. This came from your mm. mind. And where did it start from? I mean, you you do tell a very um, specific kind of story with all three of your movies. Like, they they're very very particular. Where did this one come from? Uh, this one came, I actually was, I was obviously reading things and watching things and, and I was, I was actually trying to consciously stay away from, from any particular influence. Now that's obviously impossible for me because <laughs> those, those classic films are just so ingrained in my cellular structures that they yeah. just come out naturally. So, yeah. but in terms of influences for this, um, I was trying to be very quiet and the image of the girl and the boy on the bed being whisked through tunnels uh, on the backs of tiny little creatures just popped into my head. And I went, wow, okay, that's something we've never seen before. Yeah. And that's, that's also, 
that's one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from a uh, producer I worked with. He said, whatever you do, show the audience something they've never seen before. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that's fantastic. Now I'm just going to work out what those creatures are. (laughs) And I started going, I started looking on the internet for, you know, weird and wonderful animals. I came across an armadillo and it was just a three second gif, but it was there and then it wasn't. It was just a ball in an instant. I thought, wow, that's fantastic. That's pretty good. But I something about the the creature itself didn't really resonate with me. And I came across this uh, funny little YouTube clip of a penguin that was a rescue in Africa called Honey Boo Boo. And this little penguin was living with this woman and just getting up to all sorts of mischief. It just had personality. <laughs> Yeah. It was climbing into the washing basket, was getting into the fridge. It was just causing havoc in the in the household. And I, I thought, okay, there's something here. And and then when I looked at what the creature was itself, you know, the soft underbelly uh, coated in the hardened scales in itself was a metaphor for the kind of things I wanted to explore. Totally. And they're fantastic characters too. And anybody that, you know, is keen enough to dig a little bit deeper um you'll they'll see that these characters all have biographies you've you've written up little biographies for them on your website um, I did. Like, where did where did all that come from how do you conjure up a a, a backstory for these creatures um, <laughs> go to sleep is... have a dream wake up write it down <laughs> <laughs> oh look i it's funny because you always seen cast bios but to some <laughs> extent you, kids aren't interested in cast bios but <laughs> They are interested in character bios, and I thought, well, if these characters are actually thespians in the real world, let's talk about how they got into the industry and be <laughs> as absurd as possible, you know? Yeah, I love that. I love that. It's sort of it was a little almost like an Easter egg for me to to trip upon that, and I just loved it. How hard is it to to get a movie like this just off the ground in general? You kind of you work outside of the Hollywood system, very independently yeah. made. Um, does that take a toll on you? Like how? How hard is it to get, to get the films? Uh, well, this film up and going was not difficult because I've got super fans like you from my previous <laughs> films. Yeah. Well, that's so good. you know those those films have done really really well, and I've been fortunate enough that we can self fund these productions. And because I do have a visual effects company, that is, uh, you know, we're, we're able to make this kind of thing come to life. However, that being said, um, I did some calculations the other day and um, if I took an eight-hour day that most people work and, you know, got rid of and basically took two, all the hours that I'd worked, um, in two and a half years, I worked 6.8 years. So oh, it was yeah. a very, it was a very <laughs> grueling process. You know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, I worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, when you actually add up 6.8 years, that's significant. Hmm. And um, my wife will tell you that that's actually the case because I was an absentee husband for a <laughs> lot of the time. Yeah, uh, tending to your other children. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, look, she's a producer on the film as well, and we like to say it's our third child together. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, love that. Uh, <laughs> another thing I love about your movies, the last two of them um, is Beth Champion. Um, you know. Oh, yeah. Man, and she's and her husband is in the last two films as well, Roland. Um, did she, did she capture your attention back in the nineties the way she captured mine? Oh, look, I I, I couldn't say that because um, Rolly's a good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> secrets, mate, secrets. What a movie that was uh, back in the day. Absolutely, absolutely. No, look, I've known Beth for a very long time. In fact, Beth helped me cast my pet dinosaur as well. Oh, excellent. So, I mean, we'd been good friends. Uh, uh, Beth and Rolly live in the Blue Mountains where mm-hmm. I was living. And, yeah, they've become great, great, great mates. And so, obviously, with my pet dinosaur, yeah, that was the first time I'd worked with them. And, yeah, you know, the, it was amazing fun, fantastic fun, particularly working with Rolly because he's, he's an absolute character. He really is an absolute <laughs> crack up. And, yeah, he's uh, got such a presence on screen too. Oh, look, off off screen he's got a presence. The guy has more <laughs> char- charisma in his left pinky than I'll ever have, you know. He's a fantastic <laughs> dude. He really is. 
And um, in fact, I had breakfast with him this morning and, you know, just everything's possible and larger than life. And I just love it. Yeah, you know, it's really inspiring. Um, but what was really funny with this one, I, I literally, as I was coming up with the character of Ego and Ergo, I was, I had them in mind, you know. Yeah. It, the um, cause, Because Rolly is so, he's, he's large, you know, he'll, he'll take up space, you know, he's got hand movements that are large and you know the dynamic between him and beth i was just like oh that, that's it and what's really funny is that they did the root chords together obviously yeah um, and did the face capture at the same time but um they've got a little home studio for doing voiceovers because beth's you know she's the voice of foxtel and this ad and that ad and yeah yeah um but what was really funny was when joe my editor and i got the rushes into the in the sweat, the sitting there just laughing our butts off. <laughs> Even when they, when they started bickering, it was still in character. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really funny. Really oh, that's funny. awesome! Uh, and just for the benefit of people listening that haven't seen the film yet, they play like a two headed turtle. So that's you know hilarious exactly. in and of itself. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, something I found very interesting is um, Beth was in a movie back a couple of years ago called The Legend of the Five, which I'm sure you know about. That was directed by mm-hmm. Joanne Samuel, who was yep. in My Pet Dinosaur. And yes, she was. Yeah, she's a good friend too. That whole movie had a very Matt Drummond feel to it. Did you have any kind of input in that no, one? No, I didn't, no I, no. I think you've inspired though. I think you've inspired because it's a very Matt well, Drummond-esque it's, film. Well, I know, you know, I know I know the filmmakers. So, yeah, I mean, look, we, we were very encouraging of them going forth and conquering. You know, that's definitely... Uh, something that you try to do in your local community yeah yeah totally and for for people listening that are not so much into children's films like i am joanne was mad max's wife in the original mad max like <laughs> yeah there's, there's some cinematic pedigree right there um mm. look I'll, I'll wrap things up in a moment but i just wanted to thank you for taking the time this is a movie i do hope people see um it, it's it's had a theatrical release i don't know if it's still theatrical at the moment you can probably answer that i mean it is in small uh in in small uh limited release at the moment yep. the reason for that is because our big release is in the u.s on june 9 right and yep. the u.s dictated all of our times so <laughs> yeah we were hoping to be out in january school holidays you know this year yeah and yep. um but when Saban and Paramount tell you that you can't release before they can, um, uh, except for six weeks before. Yes. <laughs> then you just say, well, you're sticking a mountain in front of my film in the US I, and you're going to cinemas. I, yeah. I was untold, you know? <laughs> well, hey, we do have an audience in America, particularly in Kentucky. We have a segment on our show from Kentucky. So, you know, there's people listening that might want to track it down. I definitely recommend that they do. Um, you get bang for buck out of your movies, mate, and I really, really enjoy them. And I hope to get my hand on a physical release of this. I know it's going digital, but maybe one day. Um, but no, thank you. Thank you so much for being part of this. Really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. And uh, yeah, if there is a digital, uh, a physical copy, I'll make sure you're one of the first to get one. <laughs> That's right. <mate>. Signed. <laughs> Done. <laughs>